Hi everyone, this is Mike89. Welcome to the first video in my Sonic 3 and Knuckles with Knuckles tutorial series. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, please make sure that you watch the videos that come before this in the playlist. Uh, the first one is a very, very useful um, video by HCO that explains how the spin dash works, and I think that's the most important thing that you need to know before you start um, digging deep into the, the levels uh, just to give you the best possible speed in any given situation. Uh, so with that out of the way, let's begin. So the, the very first thing you got to do here is actually one of the finickier tricks in the entire game. So you need to do a spin dash, jump off that ramp before, and you can see he, uh, about here is where the ceiling is in this section. Um, you want to make sure that you don't actually hit the ceiling. If you do, then you go ahead with too much speed and you'll actually overshoot the enemy that's coming up. If you ta drop your jump just before hitting the ceiling then you tail off with a little bit less speed and that is what lets you land directly on the enemy. Now just before you hit it you want to hit one of the jump buttons again and that uh, gives you a technique called the super glide and that converts uh, downward momentum from landing on something into significant upward momentum and what you're going to do is you're going to land on it and then going to fly out this way as soon as you hit the enemy hold left and that will make you turn back around in the air as well and you actually grab a wall that's just above you looks a little bit like this oh actually I, I didn't even hit the wall there okay um, so then over here there's some speed shoes which is why you go over here uh, and then just after moving away from this wall we'll, we'll see exactly where it is uh, yeah not not far off the wall at all you want to do a full jump and that should land you on that spring in the in the tree there and then full jump full jump full jump small jump and then that jump probably doesn't need to be that big that jump can be pretty small once you hit the that first up slope though it's five jumps as soon as you hit the ground you jump again and that last one all you gotta do is land safely in the loop and away you go uh, nothing that happens here actually matters so don't worry about that too much. Uh, here you can actually save a little bit of extra time on this uh, by doing a glide just as you approach the bottom. Uh, Knuckles I can't actually get through this gap here. Uh, he's a tiny bit too high. Uh, even if he's rolling he won't get under it. However, if you glide from about here and slide along the ground, as long as you've got enough momentum to get over here on the other side of the spikes, because if you don't, and you stand up, say, here, uh, the spikes will just kill you. But as you can see, they are opening up pretty soon anyway, so there wasn't really that much time to be saved. Um, rest of that was pretty straightforward. Uh, now what I'm looking for here is there's a line in the background that's formed by a few of these different um, lines in the background. They all line up nicely and you can see uh, that when the when the flames line up with them so you can see that the flames are in that line now uh, that's when I jump and then you want to make sure that you jump straight up until you get to the peak of your jump that's when you start moving right so that when you get to the boss you actually bounce up on it and you continue bouncing up on top of it for all six hits kinda like that uh, now this run does something you probably won't see anymore so I actually deliberately delayed um, the bonus count up starting and that was to manipulate um, the platform cycles in Act 2. Uh, we don't do that anymore because 
uh, of the change to the timing system. Now that we time real-time minus time bonuses, uh, it doesn't actually matter whether you lose a couple of seconds there or a couple of seconds waiting for a cycle later. Uh, that time counts all the same. So, <clears throat> so I would recommend not doing that now because it would save you a little bit of extra time um, later on. So, important to slow down in a couple of these sections so that you're jumping off the flat part of the ground. Uh, what you're looking for is for this platform here to be at the right edge of this cycle. Uh, if you see that, then you're on good pace for what's coming up. So, uh, very important that you do a loop jump out of one of these loops. It doesn't really matter which one, um, but I recommend doing the first one so that you can see whether you've maintained as much of the speed as you want. And the loop jump in its simplest form is you start from about where this fourth ring is and then jump. And you jump straight down into this part of the loop where there's a very steep slope. So you actually maintain your momentum and uh, if you are holding right instead of down when you land, uh, you'll go back into running form instead of rolling. And that helps quite a lot with this jump. So you need to jump pretty late here. It's, it's about there. Um, and you just go absolutely flying up the screen. <clears throat> up the screen. And you can see there, there's a set of spikes. If you actually jump any later than what I did there, uh, you won't move far enough to the right and you'll hit the spikes instead. So you don't want to see that. You want to jump up quickly glide onto this platform, spin Nash away, and, okay, this tube is absolutely terrible. So, more often than not, when you get up to here, just as the, just as the tube drops for the second time, this corner has a terrible habit of completely killing your speed. And when that happens, you come out of this tube really slowly, and more often than not, the platform that you saw just up there, it's about here at the bottom of its cycle and just about to move up and you lose a whole cycle on this platform. This is actually the, the main reason for the delay at the end of Act 1. Uh, but now, because now we don't, because um, now we're not going to do that, that gives you a little bit of extra time, uh, especially if that tube decides to give you trouble. Uh, so now depending on when you catch this platform, so I've called it on the way down, uh, so that means I've got plenty of time to jump out here and over to the spikes, uh, which is what you're going to see there. If you catch it on the way up instead, then the best thing to do is actually to wait on it for a second and there's a bridge just up here and jump and glide onto the bridge instead. Uh, okay, so. In so jump when you hit the checkpoint and then you'll see here you jump up and then as you get to the peak of your jump just glide and that causes you to run off to the right uh, that's a technique you'll see a lot you can do that anywhere there's a sprite that you land on uh, okay important when you land here that you actually drop to about here. This um, this red spring actually has quite a large activation range right at, right about where Knuckles is right now. Uh, so if you land any closer than what you did, what I did there, uh, the, the red spring will actually kick in as soon as you get to about here and it'll throw you off. There's another red spring on, on that side uh, and you won't even touch the ground. You'll uh, you'll miss the ground entirely. The reason you want to land on this side is so that you spin Nash back this way and then jump immediately after hitting the spring. Uh, then there's an enemy coming up just after and you want to roll through that. And you have red spring speed all the way through the boss. Um, now, that what we're going to do is as soon as this line here reaches the left edge of the screen, uh, the the screen locks into the boss position. So as soon as that happens, we're immediately going to jump and glide back over. 
And what we're doing is we're trying to line ourselves up on this log of the bridge here. Uh, and what that does is it puts you between the two um, the fireball shooter things on this boss, which are positioned about there and there. Um, there's no real great way to time this jump, you just have to kind of guess when the boss is coming out. You can use the fading of the music, that can help, uh, but you don't really have a lot to go on here. Uh, so we're going to bounce one, two, three, four, five times, and then after that, this second one's about to fire. So we're going to move Knuckles over to the left of the hitbox a bit now that these ones have gone. So they're not a danger, and we want to move away from the one that is a danger. And then after eight hits, just glide back to safety on the platform. Uh, now, since we were talking about um, real-time minus time bonus, <laughs> uh, hitting this capsule as early as possible now becomes a priority. You can actually hit it. You can see it dips up and down slightly, uh, but you can actually hit it when it's over here as it dips down to its lowest point. That is the optimal time to hit it. Um, it's a very difficult jump to make, and then you also have to glide back to safety afterwards. Uh, so, if that, if going for that doesn't really suit you, then just wait until it gets to about there. And that's Angel Island. So now that that's done, uh, I'm gonna go back, and I'll do this after every stage. Uh, go back to the start and play the entire stage without any interruptions. How did it look in a run?